Bronson. I'm Mike Kovac. As a freelance photographer, I usually decide the kind of pictures I want to take, but not always. Sometimes the choice is outside my control and begins with someone else in another part of the city. play games over the telephone with strangers. I don't play games either. I'm doing you a favor, Kovac. If you want a great picture, you'll be at the corner of Meyer Street and Brooklyn Avenue at 10 o'clock tonight. Marky, I don't like this very much. Whatever you're going to do, I, I just assume... Winkler, you pull that switch when he comes out so I'll know it's him. Then you keep your mouth shut, right? Uh, yes, sir. Right. Remember, you're a family man. what? We wait. Right on time. Now it's Bartlett's turn. An anonymous phone call leading to an almost deserted late at night street. I didn't like it. But if you're to make a living with your camera, you don't pass up any kind of a tip. all about, Martha. Kovac, come over here, Kovac, and get that picture I promised you. I said, come over here, Kovac, and don't forget to bring your camera. Are we still playing games? Like I told you, I don't play games. I suppose I should have expected something like this. Take a picture. Go ahead. Take a picture of a man who likes to talk too much. You want pictures taken, you take them yourself. I said, take his picture. I got no quarrel with you, Kovac. But so help me. You take his picture. You take his picture or I'll blow your insides out. Book. You haven't finished yet. Take another one. I said take another one.
You'll never get away with this. Take it now. Operator, it's JM2-9970. Would you get me the police, please? Quickly as you can. You can turn that light on now. It's right above your head. Well, there you are. There's your picture. I gotta hand it to you, Kovac. You're a pretty sharp man with a camera. Yeah, if you like that kind of picture. I know what you mean. It makes you lose your appetite. Who was he? His name was Sam Bartlett, a local merchant. Honest, hardworking, wife and three kids. Got any idea who did it? Yeah. Guy by the name of Markey. Glenn Markey. You sure were a big help to him tonight? Now, wait a minute. These pictures get into a newspaper or a magazine, Mr. Kovac, and you'll be in partnership with a murderer. What are you talking about? Glenn Markey runs a protection racket. He's got the local merchants so scared they've been paying off without a peep. All except one, a newcomer to the neighborhood, Sam Bartlett. So Markey killed him tonight and had you there to take pictures. As a very graphic reminder to the others that Markey means business. Well, now, look, if you know it was Markey, why don't you just pick him up and charge him? I can't prove anything. You'd better call in. Now, there's only one way to nail Marky, but I need your help to put it over. Sure. You want me to hold up the pictures till you gather more evidence? It's all right with me. Well, I'd like you to do more than that. Instead of these pictures appearing in tomorrow's papers, I'd like to plant a story that says the police have an eyewitness, a photographer, who could identify the killer. You. Abrams, I already told you, they both wore masks. I couldn't identify either one of them if they walked in the door. I know that. You know it, but Marky doesn't. You see, up to now, Marky's played it pretty cool. That's why we haven't been able to nab. But tonight, he had to resort to violence. If my hunch is right, he won't stop. And if he should try something again, we could be on hand to grab him. What's the matter with you? I could end up like Bartlett did. You want to see us get Marky, don't you? Sure, you give me a buzz when you pick him up. Look, Abrams, I risk my neck sometimes taking pictures. Well, that's all right. It's my business, but it's not my business to go out catching killers. That's yours. I'll guarantee you full protection. You can't guarantee me anything, and you know it. What you want is a pigeon. Well, I'm not it. I like being alive. So did Sam Bartlett. Sure, look what it got him. Sorry. I guess it was just a case of mistaken identity. Now, what's that supposed to mean? I checked on you. The boys downtown said you didn't scare easily. I guess they must have meant somebody else. You got a fine set of pictures, Kovac. They should bring you a good price. <laughs> Out of bed. No, Michael, never before midnight. Come, I will make us some tea. It's terrible, terrible. Michael, you must be very careful. You must do exactly as the police oh, says. No. Now, wait a minute, Pop. A man who would do such wait a, a minute, terrible wait a thing. Uh, there's nothing to worry about. I already told him I wouldn't do it. The police asked for my son's help, and he refused them? Now, don't you start on me, too. Why should I stick my neck out? And if you don't, what will happen to the man who did this, this terrible thing? This is none of my concern, Pop. Michael, why did you come here tonight? 
It's like I told you. I wanted to see you, have a glass of tea. Do I need a reason to come here? No. But tonight, yes, there was a reason. You wanted me to agree with you that you were right in refusing to help the police. But I won't, Michael. You are the only thing I have in this world. But I won't help you make such a mistake. Bob, now you just listen to me. The police can't guarantee me any real protection. And I might just end up like this. Then it is because you are afraid, Michael? Well, of course I'm afraid. I'm sorry, Michael. I have no argument against fear. It is a terrible thing. You must decide by yourself. Oh, I already have, Paul. I guess I decided back there with Lieutenant Abrams. I suppose I came here for one last try, that's all. I'll call him. Say, I want to speak with Lieutenant Abrams. But, Mike... It's all right, Paul. Right. Lieutenant, if it's not too late, I'm your clay pigeon. Kovac, what's the matter? You nervous? Well, you know it. Well, I made my normal rounds today, and I didn't see anything. And I didn't see any of your boys either. You sure I'm getting police protection? The best. That's why I didn't see them. What's your schedule? Where do you go from here? Oh, well, I'm going to go down and see my father for a while, then I'll go eat. Wait a minute. You didn't tell me last night that you had a family. Well, I don't, just a father. You didn't ask, anyhow. Where's he live, here in the city? The Lower East Side, why? Don't worry, I'll phone the station right away and take care of it. What's his address? I talked to my father a half hour ago. He told me he had to hang up. He had a customer, a guy who made the appointment this morning. That telephone work? Yeah. Call him. Operator, this is JM2-9970. Would you get me Canal 61098, please? Let's go. She's not here. What's that? Abrams, you better get on a ball and quick. Now take it easy, will you, Mike? You just call up your men and have them pick up Marky. That's not going to do your father any good. Give me a chance to get something on Marky. He's not going to do anything right away. He'll wait for us to make the first move. Not us. Me, as of now, you're out of it. You can't do that. You just watch me, Abrams. Father's in a lot of trouble because of me, and I don't see any other way out. Now, how do I get in touch with Glenn Markey? The Meadowbrook Real Estate Company. That's his front, but... This is the wrong way to do it. Information? I want the number of the Meadowbrook Real Estate Company. You got any better ideas? Yeah, you can let me handle it. Like you said last night, you're the photographer, I'm the cop. Nothing doing. They picked up my father because they want me out in the open away from the police. Thank you. So if that's what they want, that's what they'll get. Meadowbrook Realty. 
Listen, this is Mike Kovac. I want to speak to Glenn Markey about my father. Mr. Markey is gone for the day. Well, it's very important that I get in touch with him. You know it and I know it, so let's stop kidding around. All right. Be on the corner of Herkimer and Lexington. Tonight, 11 o'clock. Wait in a car in front of the telephone booths till one of them rings. I'll be there. If I can get face to face with Mark, you got a chance of convincing him that I didn't see anything last night. Well, what if you can't convince him? I'll play it by ear from then on. Oh, look, Mike, this isn't the right way. Abrams, let me handle it my own way, will you? And stay away from me, you and your man, far away. And I mean it. This is Abrams. I'm on stakeout the Iris Theater on Meyer near Brooklyn Avenue. I need another car to cover the back. Now be sure to tell him to stay out of sight. We can't let Kovac know we're anywhere near this place. He just walked in. Good. I don't know why it had to be here. Why not? It's perfect. When the show lets out at 12.04, we hustle him out the back. Carver will have a car waiting in the alley. We'll go for a little ride and uh, no more eyewitness. Well, what about the old man? Hmm? Don't look so upset, Wexler. It'll all be over in a little while. I'd uh, better check the lobby. Sure. Sure, you do that. Give me the phone. 
Lieutenant. Yeah, what is it, Harry? A car just pulled into the alley and parked behind the theater. One man. Looks like he's waiting for somebody. Okay, keep your eye on Things start popping on Newton Avenue. Okay, Lieutenant. We'll wait a couple more minutes. If he doesn't come out, I'll have to go in and get him. Suspicious? Mr. Markey, please. I, I don't want to go through with this. Look, Winkler, don't give me any trouble. You just stay out here and keep an eye on the door. I'll get Kovac in the car and then come back for his old man. Hello, Kovac. Markey? Sorry to have kept you waiting. These things take some time to arrange. You ready to come along? No. I got a car waiting out back. You don't want me to take you see the old man? I'm not going anywhere with you, Marky. Not on your terms. Then, uh, how about these terms? Marky, you made a big mistake letting me sit here too long. It gave me time to think. I was scared when I walked in here, but I'm not now. Okay, so you're not scared. But this gun says that you're coming along with me. Well, this gun says I'm not. You're bluffing. Well, now, you just think about that when these slugs start ripping into your body. Maybe it'll be a comfort to you. Now, what'd you do with my father? I'll beat you, Kovac. I'll cut you in two before you ever pull the trigger. You won't take that chance, Mark. You're not brave enough to die. That's what I was thinking about while I was waiting for you. Now, where's my father? You don't want to die either. Marky, I've got nothing to lose. If I leave with you, I die anyhow. I'm giving you three seconds to tell me where he is. One. I'm warning you, Kovac, for the last time. You better start getting smart. Two. Don't try it, Kovac. It was Marky. He made me do it. It wasn't my fault. He forced me. Where are they? They're inside. The old man's in the office, in the closet. I didn't want to hurt him. It was all Marky. You stay here. Turn on the lights in there. All right, Marky. You're all done. Come back. Where are you? Right here. are too dangerous for people like us. Next time the police ask, you tell them no. But, Pop, you said that... <laughs> what do you say, Pop? <laughs> 